today we're talking about chemical regulation in Australia. What is the registration process for crop protection products in Australia? Nick, I guess you could sum that up simply by saying the process is very much science-based. It's a lot of science, a lot of research, and it's about ensuring that those products, once registered and applied in accordance with the label, are safe. Safe to the environment, safe to humans, the users, and, and obviously safe to our crops. And efficacious, they've got to do the job that we want them to. And does GRDC have a role in this at all? We do. Um, obviously, you know, there's big companies involved here and it's an extremely expensive process, a long-term process. So one of the roles that GRDC has is then partnering with those companies to look at the smaller crops and the smaller uses that may not be financially attractive to those companies, but those producers still very much need help with their crop protection choices and products available. And how common is that? Does it happen a lot? It, it does, um, very much so. Uh, I mean, GRDC's got 25 level, leverable crops, which you'd be well aware of. Yeah. And outside of the, the big eight or nine, you know, wheat and canola and barley, all the other ones are quite minor and not particularly attractive. So, so we do need to help by, by combining our efforts with the companies to give growers worthwhile and effective solutions. And is that sort of working with known chemistry that's actually maybe in another crop, registered in another crop, and then trying to bring it across and try and expand that registration? Very much so, yeah, that's what we're doing. So the products have to be registered in Australia, which deals with all the environmental issues and other things. And then we look at, okay, yeah, it's, it might be a horticultural product that's not in grains, but it's a great solution for lentils or peanuts, you know, some of these smaller crops. So yeah, it's about taking known products, known compounds that are registered in Australia and doing the work about residues, crop safety and efficacy to, to then expand their use. And so if it was a grower base sort of idea and I guess not so much in a lobbying um, sense, but if uh, growers sort of deemed or, or did some research or found out there was no chemistry needed or they looked at other products that were used in other countries, where would that sort of fit and how would they sort of approach the GRDC or is there any place for growers to sort of come and bring ideas forward to GRDC? There's always the opportunity for growers to bring, bring ideas and concerns to GRDC and there's several mechanisms and one of them that most growers would hopefully be aware of is the um, National Grower Network and those regional meetings that are held. The ideal opportunity to discuss these needs and say, hey, I'm, I'm seeing this problem more and more often and I don't have an effective solution, we need help or approaching any GRDC staff. And most of those requests end up on my desk as, as the ChemReg manager. Okay. But then we're going to look at those requests and prioritise them and, and other alternatives and, and what may or may, may not be needed. It's challenging though when somebody says, oh, this is registered overseas, just bring it to Australia. And that's, uh, it's, it's not that simple. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff, science required there in spaces that GRDC cannot invest around toxicology and that sort of thing. And that's the registrant's domain. And we really need the registrant to have brought it to the country first, mm. and then we can work on expanding the use patterns domestically. And I guess um, Australia is sort of a unique uh, landscape, you know, for agriculture. We're a very, um, we're not subsidised. It's a very low margin base. I'm thinking more so probably broad acre cropping in this instance. But I guess, you know, that would certainly you know, can cause you know, some concern for um, chemical companies trying to invest in new products because obviously they've got such a short time and window to actually get back, recoup their cost from any new registration and any new uh, molecules coming onto the market. So does it, does sort of Australia sort of look on that world stage, maybe not so, um, I guess, um, not so attractive for investment in that space? Dead right, we're not particularly attractive. We are sort of at the end of the, the life cycle of products. Um, you know, products are, go into Europe, they go into North America, they go into soya bean, rice and maize predominantly because that's what recoups my financial investment in getting them registered. Mm. And almost as an afterthought, Australia is considered, mm. uh, which does make it hard. It makes it very hard to attract new, new compounds. But again, we could potentially partner with a, with a registrant and they say, well, yes, we're going to come to Australia, but we're only going to register it in wheat. No. And we may say, yeah, but we need it in barley and treat and oats, or we need it in canola. No, no, we're not going to do it because there's no, no financial return. Right, that's how do we partner? How do we incentivize? Yeah. And also, how do we incentivize you to approach Australia more quickly with, with that process by helping you once it's in Australia? What are the long-term goals of supporting crop protection products in Australia? I guess to really simply state the long-term goal is to give growers viable efficacious options 
to control the, the threats and needs that they have in a way that protects the environment, protects our crops, protects human health and protects trade so that we actually have solutions that are acceptable to everybody.